so uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'll try to keep it short because we're running a little bit out of time. I'm actually presenting a, a recently funded project, so I don't have anything to show you. What I have to show you is our ideas, and I can promise you that the technology exists, and uh, how basically what we got money for uh, to do in the next two years. So, um, wait, okay. why is this? So this is basically the outline of the talk. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself, say what the problem is, and then go a little bit of what has been done until now and what we're gonna do uh, for the next year and a half uh, to try to, to push language uh, learning through computers uh, onwards. A bit of my self-introduction, I'm basically a cognitive science that came from Portugal about uh, three years ago. I'm at NTU in the Computational Linguistics Lab, and we do a whole bunch of semantic related and syntax, deep syntax. So a lot of um, meaning banks, both pre banks and, and sense banks. We work with word nets, we work with computational grammars, we work with semantic based uh, machine translation and also multilingual uh, sentiment analysis. But today what I'm gonna present you is basically one of my contributions to, to, the, to the multitude of projects that we run at NTU, which is a computer assisted language learning. And this comes basically from my passions of learning languages and, and try to get computers to help me learn languages because sometimes human can, uh, cannot reach everyone's uh, needs. So basically, if, you, if you've been to university in Singapore, for example, you know that uh, technolo te te technology-enhanced learning is a very big uh, keyword right now. So, and you probably heard about MOOCs and e-learning platforms and blended learning classrooms. So it's very hype. But there's a problem. So some uh, courses, some some um, contents are easier to implement in these kinds of platforms than others, basically. And language is one of those that is very hard to do. Why? Because basically, language is infinite. If you do computational linguistics, you know that uh, language is a is a very interesting uh, hard problem. Um, but also because you would have to be able to scale and to adapt to students and to know the model of language sometimes, even to know what students are trying to mean when they say something and you want to help them. And basically that's where we are uh, trying to help. Um, so I'm gonna start a little bit with the background. So this already exists. This um, is uh, by um, colleagues of ours at Stanford that have been implementing systems that try to help students in US public schools to learn English. So this is teaching English for native speakers of English in the US schools. And basically the goals uh, are to help improve writing skills very broadly. And how to do this is basically they try to uh, present a few sentences of context. They have the students read. This is grade, between grades two and grade six. Um, they, they have the student read the, the little passage and they ask the student a question. Okay? And then they try to grade the answer in somehow, and if the answer is both grammatical and meaningful, so if it answers the question, they give them a pat on the back and say, go on. Otherwise, they try to help them, saying something is wrong with your answer. Uh, let me see what I can do to help you. Okay? So this is an example, right? So Abigail didn't want to go hiking with her parents because she felt too tired and wanted to rest instead. Okay? Question to the student. This is a fifth grade um, um, example. So why didn't Abigail want to go hiking, right? So when you have a whole bunch of, um, of words that they can click and drag, the, the interface has changed over the time, but basically the idea of the exercise is the same. So given these words that have been um, 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 selected to answer this question, what do students, what can students answer to be a correct answer to this problem? Well, there are a few possibilities. For example, she was tired, she was too tired, she was too tired to go hiking, or she didn't want to go hiking because she was too tired, for example. Uh, but actually, there are actually by a few more possibilities, as you may imagine, and I'm gonna, not gonna read all these. And if you think about it, there are more than what you thought there were right now, okay? And I can continue going, and there's definitely more than you want to enumerate. So enumeration is not gonna work for you, why? Because I said three minutes ago, the list is very long because language is infinite. 
so you have a problem. So how do you actually go about this? Um, and now you're thinking, how many more slides of sentences does he have to show us? And only one more. So as long as you get the point that this is not all of them, right? I could go on forever and ever. So how to deal with this, OK? So we don't want to enumerate them. We know that uh, probabilistic grammars uh, are fun to work with. But if you're teaching language to sixth graders or fifth graders, you probably don't want to go that way. You, do, you cannot deal with 80% uh, correct grammar on sentences that you want to teach students, right? That's also a problem. Um, and as we, as you can imagine, we need both um, ways to check the meaning of what the student is trying to, to say and the grammaticality of the sentence. So you have to check that they actually answer the question and if the, the sentence is, is, a, is a correct English sentence. So basically we reuse a handwritten computational grammar to do this. In this case, we use the English resource grammar, uh, which has been developed in, in Stanford for, for many years now, and extend them with mal rules, okay? And if you're now going mal what, I will say it again, mal rules. It's a very simple idea. It's grammar rules, you extend the grammar rules to accept something that is mildly ungrammatical, but you have controlled yourself, okay? So in this case, if you see um, English example on the right, dogs is cute is an ungrammatical sentence in English and I could do this by having a rule saying I will accept a plural subject with a singular predicate and but I will check this in my list saying oh this is one of the bad ones so if I if I produce if students produce a, a rule a sentence that I had to use this rule for then I know it's not good for Chinese a very the similar sentence you don't have the same mistakes basically you have other types of mistakes like using the copula should before an adjective you wouldn't use that right so this is a different kind of mal rule but still a mal rule or a mal lexical entry as um, as we call it um, within our system okay so here are some sample errors that the English uh, system is actually uh, has actually implemented uh, and is capable of checking for. And again, it's beyond the point going through them because what I want to convey is, is, is the meshes behind it. What is an HPSG uh, implemented grammar? It's slightly beyond the scope of this talk, but you have to believe me that they exist, right? They have, they have been handwritten by linguists for decades. And for example, in the case of the English uh, grammar, you have very high coverage, maybe like 90% for the whole English Wikipedia. And these grammars are basically um, lexical, le they have a rich number of lexical with lots of features that they use um, unification to, to unify with rules and other lexical entries. And then at the end, if you get a full sentence, you also get a meaning representation. In this case, we use minimal recursion semantics, which is a very computer-friendly semantic uh, representation. Um, and it's actually this representation can be um, merged across languages. So we have used this for machine translation, semantic-based machine translation. This is what we use, MRS, uh, minimal recursion semantics. Okay, so with this MRS, you can generate back sentences. And this is how we generated some of the answers that I just printed before. I didn't write them all down. Uh, okay, so the extensions to what you need to, to, to have these grammars help you out. Okay, so you need to add these mild rules that I just told you about. So you go on to the field, you check what students are doing um, in, their, in their papers, you say, okay, these are the ungrammatical, what are the errors they're doing? Let's implement, further implement the grammar, allow these, and remember that these are wrong, okay? And then, unfortunately, we also need to do some reductions because language is too ambiguous. So in this case, for example, we, we might reduce some very, lexical, very ambiguous lexical entries uh, for the, for example, to flower as a verb. They don't know this. Fifth graders don't need to know that. So if I can control the lexicon, I also don't need to worry about all the ambiguity that you can actually have in English, but that a fifth grader uh, wouldn't know. So I can, I can reduce my, my search space when I'm trying to get, um, there's multiple parses, of course, for, for many of these sentences, but I get less in this case, okay? So does this really work? Yes, this, the, the, the example I was just talking about it has been implemented in the US. Many, many, many thousands of, um, of, of kids in the US have been um, put through these systems 
um, and they get better scores at the end of their of their years, right? So this has been uh, made into a startup company, um, but the core technology is all open source. So the grammar is open source, the, and, and you can use it for whatever you want. And even the mouth rules are open source. You can still use them for whatever you want. And similar projects started to, 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 to appear. For example, for Norwegian, you have such a grammar that you can do the same thing, and the Norwegians had the idea of saying, well, if I'm, gonna, if, I'm, if I'm helping other people learn Norwegian, maybe I want to give the feedback in multiple languages. So that's what they did. So they have, if you want to learn Norwegian, you can get the feedback in Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, whatever you want. They have maybe 20 plus languages that they give the feedback. But the problem is that language is too ambiguous still. Um, so in the examples that you just saw, um, there are basically parse ranking algorithms that say, well, the most likely parse out of, uh, out of the ones that I have here is going to be this one, and so I'm going to give the, um, the student a feedback message that is based on the guess that I thought he meant. Because, as it turns out, even ungrammatical sentences are ambiguous. And this is where we come for. This is, how, this is where our project is actually started from here. If you don't believe me that un like ungrammatical sentences are ambiguous, my question would be, how would you correct the, the sentence on the top? That dog liked the cat happy. That is an ungrammatical sentence of English. This is a, this is a prototype, what we, what we promised to build for our project. And I, can, uh, I could uh, argue here that you can correct that sentence in many, many, many ways. And three of them are there, basically. Our, the previous system that exists would basically choose the most likely error made by students, and that's fine, so as long as you're not the student and saying, that's not what I meant, I know how to say that, okay? So what we promise to do is, is the following. So we use this machine translation technology, which is a very high quality, but um, like hard to implement because it's, it's, it's mostly by hand. You can do some, um, you can do some learning from, from the inference rules, but what we want is high quality, uh, teaching, teaching quality um, precision, right? So what we promise is that we're gonna use this semantic-based machine translation, uh, which we have between, for example, English and Japanese, and we're gonna implement this for Chinese. And then, and then when an English student or a Chinese student wants to try, wants to learn the other language, and the grammar knows that it's wrong, instead of choosing the top, um, the top most likely error that they made, it's going to ask back in the original language. So in this case, this is an example for um, Chinese native speakers learning English. They just uh, wrote that sentence. And the grammar, the system knows that something is wrong with it. And instead of guessing which one it is, it's going to give back in Chinese. You have the glosses underneath um, saying, there's something wrong with your sentence. If you can help me, tell me what you meant. I can tell you exactly what your problem is. In this case, um, he wanted the student wanted option C, for example, and then you can say, okay, so if you want object C, you need to conjugate your verb, okay? Otherwise, there'll be other kinds of syntactic errors. So, um, like the cat is a comparative, and it's completely different. So the dog, like the cat, is happy. Missing the copula and conjugation and conjugating the verb are two very, very common mistakes from Chinese learners of English. So, how does the system choose? Right now, it chooses from likelihood. And it gets right maybe 60, 70% of the time. And it always corrects something, which is maybe helpful. But as a language student myself, uh, if you get corrected by something you didn't mean, it's very frustrating. Saying, no, I know how to say that. I was trying to say something else. OK? So this is basically what I said. We're going to make this system that exists for English multilingual. We do have a small grammar of Chinese, not as, not as large as the English grammar. And our target audience will, is, is university students. So right now, we are, we are teaming up with the Chinese teaching department at NTU, and we are making their courses, the syllabus and the grammar constructions that they use, the lexical that they learn, we are mining all that into our grammar and, and grading it by, you know, by lessons. So in the first lesson, they learn 50 words. In the 10th lesson, they have learned maybe 500 words altogether. So with this, basically, we're also integrating these lexicons with WordNets, because we have WordNets for all that. And we'd like, we would like to use WordNets to help with the machine translation. So um, the pairwise uh, semantic-based machine translation 
Um, I'm gonna again gracefully skip, but I can promise you that it exists. If you, it's not very, it's not very popular uh, for multiple reasons because the you have to apply if you want to apply it to very broad domains, then you get a headache. Uh, but to apply it to small domains like language teaching, where you know exactly what you want to do, it's it's much better because you get all the possible syntactic constructions given a, a meaning representation. Okay. And uh, at the same time, the system that we build uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be able to collate a very large uh, learner corpus for uh, Chinese learners at NTU. That is going to be at the same time tree banked, sense banked, sense tagged, um, and there is going to be a, a blended learning experience, like experiment, going on at NTU starting at the end of this year. Um, the power of semantic disambiguation is this is just a little workflow of how the system would grow. It's basically if you give a sentence and the system thinks there's nothing wrong with the sentence, it looks grammatical, then it again just pats you in the back and says, move on to the next sentence. But if something is wrong, basically, it will, it will start this, this disambiguation process. So if, if there's no ambiguity, then we'll just say, okay, there's only, the sentence is ungrammatical, there's only one possible way of me to correct the sentence. So we will just do it. If there's many ways, then again, we'll pipe it through the machine translation um, um, algorithm and, and we'll, we'll ask again the student in their native language, um, what did they meant? And then after that, we'll say, okay, if you meant that, I can trace back the construction that I used to, to give you this translation so I know exactly what your problem was. And the, 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 the goal of this is to allow systems to not guess anymore, basically, because when you want to teach students, you don't want you want high coverage, 100% uh, quality, and not guessing so much. Um, we call it uh, intelligent again because it's bilingual. We'll have a very rich knowledge about the syntax and the semantics of both languages, and we'll be able to to help students correct their um, their language skills. Um, this I've already said, but basically to re to do this, it requires knowing the curriculum very well. So. Uh, that is basically at the end of the point that we are right now, is that we, we know uh, very well what is happening with the Chinese curriculum. We know all the grammar structures and all the lexica that they have used um, in, in the early levels of Chinese, so that we can, um, we can strip down the grammar to, those, to that level, basically. And um, basically, as I, uh, I also mentioned before, um, we, we are serving the not only NTU, but we also want to make the tool more general. So we also serve it, for example, for the official, um, like the HSK, the official Chinese examination, and other textbooks that we don't use here, because the again, the system is gonna be open source, it's gonna be web-based, and if you say, oh, I'm using that textbook, and I've been through lessons one to seven, can you help me? And then, yes, the system is gonna be customizable that way, saying by level, saying by this textbook, up to level seven, up to text, lesson seven, sorry, uh, and the system will know how your Chinese is supposed to be. And um, basically the evaluation, we're doing it against corpus that we are building ourselves, and I mentioned before, it's gonna go, um, it's gonna go through a blended learning experience at NTU starting the end of this year. Future work, um, it involves uh, a PhD that I'm actually uh, applying for and will definitely uh, need, so the, the, the concept it will work, we know it works. We don't know if it scales uh, too well for the language level, okay? Because language, as language gets more and more complicated, uh, then the implementation cost would be, uh, would be a little uh, more troublesome. So you need a little more time, so as, as levels go up, you need a little more time to get that on. But I, what, I, what I would also mostly like to work is on gamification and user modeling this system. So, yeah, but the example I showed you was not very exciting, and we saw just a very nice presentation from uh, just before me that games are cool, right? So if you can make this into if you can make this into something that the students actually um, get points for, or fight with each other, or for example. Um, team up uh, within one classroom to go against the other classrooms, or between NTU and NUS, for example, see who has who learns Chinese the quickest. I believe that in Singapore that would work very well, and we have reasons to believe that. So. Um, and uh, later on, which is not on the, on the agenda right now, but I would like also to turn this into a standalone app, meaning that 
we are developing, and we only promise to do this, uh, that is a support for in-classroom um, uh, system, so that the, 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 the teacher knows exactly what is wrong with his student, what, what constructions are they uh, failing, what lexical units they have failed, but uh, this, there's nothing stopping us from making this for a full self-paced app, where you don't need a teacher anymore, um, and in some cases that would be, uh, that would be fun. And basically, um, this is what I just said. I'm not gonna summarize, but uh, I, my hope was that you thought that what I just presented uh, is cool, and I can promise you that it exists, basically. And what I have to acknowledge is that uh, the MOE has given us a bit of money for the next two years to, to show that this is possible. And if this is possible, then more will come. Um, and basically, that's it. Thank you for your time. Incredible, fascinating work, and thank you for the insight into the computational linguistic that behind all of this. I think it would be an excellent idea to do the app side of things, because uh, as far as Chinese is concerned and Singapore is concerned, uh, teaching, uh, if it's simplified, it's as simple as parents downloading an app to get your children to just learn by themselves. But if it fuels your research that's going on in the back, I think that would be amazing. Singapore parents would love to download this like, right away. It's true. Though, when you are liaising with uh, language teachers, this is where they draw the line in helping you so much, right? So right now, we to be able to, to work with language teachers, um, they, they don't like to feel like their role doesn't exist anymore. And I do believe that even with an app, the language teacher role is still very important. So I've talked nothing about speech, right? Because speech recognition, yes, you can use it. Is it gonna be great? No, okay? so. If you need to, if you want to learn Chinese and you want to learn tones without a, a native speaker telling you no, do it again, you're going to have a hard time. Uh, but for some skills, I, I, I believe that you don't need a person, right? So, yes, to some extent, I, I, I would like to develop the app, but we're also aware that uh, to get the help from the teaching community, we need to, to do things right, with the right place. There is no replacement for the human element. Yes, uh, of course. But computers can help them or not. Yes. Does anybody have a quick question? Uh, yeah. Uh, how do you keep up to date with this project? Sorry? Is there a way to keep up to date with this project? E yes, you can email me, for example. But <laughs> uh, so we don't have anything um, on on GitHub yet, but it will be. So we're basically developing a little bit in house. But again, the technology, both English and Chinese grammars, are completely open source, and the uh, we have made it very clear to MOE that we wanted it to maintain it open source, so the project is funded to be open source uh, at the end. Uh, so. Great. Maybe one last question? Do you have a name of this project? Not yet. I, I'm, I, we're thinking about cool <laughs> cool um, like names to, to market it around, but uh, not yet. Is that one more? Yeah, yes. So it will be open source? It will be open source, yes. Yeah, last one. that 
look the same, that produce the same semantics, and that can be very easily stringed uh, in these kinds of pipelines. So if you would, you would want uh, to do such a, a thing for a minority language, then uh, join, 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 join Delphin, for example. Start a grammar for that language, and uh, you can very soon, uh, again, the, the, the difference of size between the English grammar and the Chinese grammar is huge. But regardless, the Chinese grammar has maybe three years in development, but it's still sizable enough to do this very cool project. So. For Singlet, uh, <laughs> then come to NTU, where are you? <laughs> uh, we can talk about it. Yes. Singlet should be amazing to have. Thank you again, Louis. Yeah, thank you.